Just because you know how to use a hammer doesn't mean you know how to build a house. Hi everybody, this is Sam with Python Basics. And as you can see in today's video, uh, we're gonna be spending a lot of time talking about uh, a conceptual type of question. So, what do I mean just because you know how to use a hammer doesn't mean you know how to build a house. So I've actually been thinking about this for a great deal of time. Actually, I guess uh, I started talking about this um, maybe a month ago now. Gee whiz, six weeks ago? So th this question right here about the stadium, this is an actual, the reason why I think I'm obsessed with this is this is, this is as close to a test question as I can see as a real life question that you may get asked to program. So let's really deep dive into this. So what am I talking about? So I hear, I hear a lot of comments on Discord or on the YouTube channel that I know how to use, I, I know Python, what do I need to do next? So let's use the equivalent of the hammer. Well, a hammer is a for loop. Then you know how to saw. But one thing that I that you the tool you don't know maybe to think about is like the measuring tape. How how to measure a, measure a board, and then how would you use the measuring tape, the saw, the hammer all together to build a wall inside the house, and you build pieces of it. So all the walls, they would look different, be different sizes, but you would assemble it in the same technique. So you would repeat things. The size and the shape would be different, but the same structure, the same number, same number of boards at the top, same number of boards at the bottom, the boards separated the same amount of length. But the thought process that goes into it, then you can, then you put the four walls together. So what I really am becoming obsessed with, with teaching and talking about this, is problem solving. Laying out and understanding, actually let's zoom in here, understanding what the problem is. You cannot, you cannot, we just got done um, with some validation at work. And my small little micro team that we're working with, you have got to understand the problem before you can do anything. I'm obsessed with that. And I look at it like a riddle. The only information you have is the information you're given in the riddle. And you have to then derive the answer from the riddle. Well, when you are given this information, you have to then derive from it and then convert it into a programming language. And granted, exclusively, I have just been writing SQL. But all of the time and energy that I have spent problem solving in Python converted over because I'm going to be partnered with a different teammate and I'm probably going to be needing to learn basic and probably even visual basic as well. And he reassured me that if I can go from Python to SQL and I won't have an issue, so he was giving me a pep talk, which was interesting. I, I haven't been coached up in a while, so that was nice most of the time. I spend my time teaching down. Now I'm coaching up and asking questions and but it is helpful because I know what it is like to be somebody who's teaching. So I make sure that I have a well-formed question to then be helped with what I'm struggling with and then so I can get direct feedback on the techniques that I'm going to need to be using. But I cannot say this enough. I cannot say this enough. It's all well and good to learn as much Python, but if you're not putting it to practice, if you're not building, practicing building walls, and there are plenty of platforms, you can search those on your own. Um, there are plenty of daily platforms that you can go out and, and stay sharp. I now don't, I have the luxury that I don't have to do that because every day I have multiple requests coming in at work to keep me sharp on real world problems of how we take the problem, we break it down, we know what it would visually look like, what, what it would do in this situation. And then after that, then I leave 
that little micro group, and then I go and write my SQL query, my program, my logic, my algorithm, whatever term you'd like to use. But it's just taking an example of what I want to do, what I as a human being, a human brain does, how does that convert into the tools that I have at hand for the language that I'm going to be using. So there we go. And if you also notice, this was video 999. So I'm thinking about what I may want to do for my thousandth video. I don't know if I want to live stream solving this where then we can go through it together and then maybe we live stream that on a Saturday or a Sunday and then we edit that down or just repackage it and load that up as the video on um, on Monday. So let's drop comments down below on what you'd what you'd like to see for our 1000th video which i cannot believe that we have 1000 videos there's probably more because we've deleted a few and had a few um what two two trailers so there's a couple more but actually on on the youtube channel for episodes of programming this is episode 999 but please, please, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up for me and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And please jump over to Discord because we have a lot of conversations over here. And I think they're all helpful. But, um, but as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. And if you haven't, check out this video right here or this one right down here. And most important, make sure you're hitting this subscribe button and the notification bell. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. Bye, guys.